What is up, everybody? How you doing? Joe McCall here. And on this video, I'm going to be doing something different that I've never done before. And I'm going to be just teaching and sharing with you three really core fundamental things that you need to be focusing on if you want to succeed and do deals in this market. Everything, as we know, has, is changing, right? And I'm not going to predict what's going to happen in the future. I'm just going to tell you in this video, and this is actually going to be one of three different videos that I'm going to do here. Um, and I'm going to be putting this live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, three different things that you should be focusing on if you want to succeed and find the new opportunities that are coming. The housing market has changed. The economy has changed. And it may take us a long time to recover. It may take just a few months to recover. The government may be able to bail us out. I don't know. Don't know. But I do know this. I started real estate investing in 2006, the height of the market. And I'd been studying it for about three or four years. I started buying houses and made a lot of mistakes. And uh, I actually, the market crashed in 2008. I lost a lot of properties to short sales and foreclosure. I'm embarrassed to admit. But um, I actually started flipping lease options. I adjusted. I, I, I started reading that book, Who Moved My Cheese? Or Who Moved the Cheese or whatever. Recommend you go check it out. And I started thinking, where is the new opportunity? What happened? What's going on now? And I started finding a new opportunity for me in lease options and specifically flipping lease options. And so that's what I'm going to be. I also started focusing on some other things because I was doing wholesaling, traditional wholesaling. I was flipping lease options. And I'll talk about what all that is here in a minute. But um, I started focusing on buyers. I started focusing more on follow-up and I started focusing more on lease options. And that's what I'm going to share with you on this video. And I got some cool things I'm going to give to you for free here on this video. Okay. Um, so this will be interesting to see if it works. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I'm going to teach you some really cool things. And I have a mind map here. I'm actually going to share my mind map. And let's see if this works. <clears throat> Boom. 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 All right. You see this mind map right here, right? Uh, this is a flip mind map. I'm calling it for a changing market. A flip mind map for a changing market. And I'm actually going to give you this mind map for free. Um, and I want to give you a link right now to get this mind map for free. Text the word flip to 313131. If you text the word flip, the F L I P to 313131. You will actually get this mind map. The thing will text you a link to click on the link. And then you go to that link, you put in your email and it'll email you a copy of this actual mind map. You're going to want this mind map. I'm giving away a lot of free things, calculators, letters, marketing pieces, other things, bunch of things. You'll, you'll see. Just bear with me and wait with me here, okay? So if you want this mind map, text the word FLIP to 313131. 313131. Cool. I got one more thing I got to show you here and I'm excited about. I just released the audiobook of my Wholesaling Lease Options. I have this book here, Wholesaling Lease Options. It's one of the books that I wrote. And this is the strategy I'm going to be talking a lot about on this video. This is the strategy that I used to quit my job one year into the recession. So in 2009... People were not quitting their jobs, right? People were praying to hold on to their jobs. People were afraid to quit because the market was falling apart and everybody was getting, not everybody, but a lot of people were getting laid off. And it was very, very difficult trying times, similar to what we're in now, but it was just spread out over a longer time. It's pretty much the main difference. Um, but I quit my job doing lease options. I was a civil engineer working for a large electrical contractor building power plants. Go figure. And, uh, I got tired of my job. I got tired of traveling. I got tired of working in a cubic hell, as I call it affectionately and um, grateful to have a job. But I was, you know, after making year, years and years of making a lot of mistakes, I finally figured out lease options in a down market work really, really well. And I was making more money doing lease options part time than I was on my full time job. And I was making a good 75, 85 grand a year. So, um, Go check. I'm selling this for only $1.99. I know things, times are tough right now, but I think you can afford a $1.99 audiobook. So for $1.99, you get the audiobook of this wholesaling lease options 
Um, right there, WLOaudio.com. All right, so I'm going to jump to the mind map here, and hopefully this works. And uh, you see my screen here, and you see this mind map. All right, so if you guys can, I know some of you are watching this live right now on Facebook, just post that, hey, yes, I can see it. Looks good. Thank you. All right. Uh, so again, here, my, my audio book for $199. Again, you can get this mind map for free. Just text the word FLIP to 313131. Now, here is what I want to talk about. Um, important things to be focusing on in this market. There's three things. Making more lease option offers or creative financing offers. Number two is buyer marketing. And number three, following up with your old leads. Um, this is, again, really critical. And I did a video a few weeks ago, a week or two ago, talking about these three things. And I'm just going to dive into more detail and actually give you a lot of stuff that you can actually start using. I also want to tell you, um, this is part of a mind map that I used before when people would text the word FLIP to 313131. So I can't remove it. So I have to keep it in here. <laughs> okay. So um, or else other people that got this mind map before won't have this. But here I have a wholesaling, a whole wholesaling 101 class. This is a like an entire wholesaling class in the mind map here. I'm giving you all of the videos and transcripts of the videos that we did here. There were 15 videos. Are all the steps to wholesaling, marketing, talking to sellers, making offers, following up, finding cash buyers, closing the deal, the tools to get started, and all of that stuff. Introduction goes up there. So um you get the videos and the mind map for wholesaling 101 in in the mind map for free. Okay, so the thing that I want to talk about on this uh, video is lease option offers. Basically, you guys, if you're thinking that you can just be a one trick wholesaling pony, where all you have is a cash offer, you're going to really struggle as we go forward in this market. Okay, bottom line, that's the way it's going to be. Um, sellers are motivated. Yes, you're going to, but here's the problem. Buyers are motivated too, and they're getting really, really nervous, and their pricing is going down. The money that they're willing to pay for a deal is going down. A lot of their lenders, private lenders, hard money lenders, transactional lenders, they're getting nervous. They're not as willing to lend freely as possible. Um, so if all you know is a cash offer, that's fine. You're going to do all right, but I'm telling you, you'll do better if you learn how to make creative offers. And so what I'm going to be talking about in this video is how to make multiple different offers. So you don't just have a cash offer. If the seller says no to a cash offer, you can offer a lease option offer or an owner financing offer. And I'm actually going to give you my calculator and show you how I make the offers here. And actually, let's walk through a couple examples um, because, again, you, you want to be able to give the seller options. You can go from getting one out of every 30 offers accepted to maybe three or four out of every three, 30 offers that accepted. Does that make sense? Um, so instead of, you can almost double, triple your lead flow by giving the seller options. Now you don't have to give the seller all the options at once, but after they say no to your cash offer, maybe give them a lease option offer. And in fact, the cool thing about lease option offers is you can give them whatever price they want as long as they're willing to wait for it. You can give, let me say that again. You can give a seller any price they want as long as they're willing to wait for it. You understand the power of that? Uh, there's a lot of power in that. And that's exactly what I started doing. I was wholesaling. I was getting tired of throwing away leads that didn't have any equity. I was getting tired you know, of leads that had equity, but they weren't willing to share any of it with me. I was tired of like going out to meet the sellers at their house I was tired of spending thousands and thousands of dollars on direct mail every month. And that's what I was doing back in 08 and 09. When I started doing lease options, I could find more leads that I could handle for free from Zillow and, Fa and Craigslist. Now you can add Facebook Marketplace to that. And I just had a VA sending texts and emails and voicemails for me. And I would just talk to the people who'd raise their hands. All right. So let's talk about the different kinds of offers that you can make to sellers. I have a calculator here in the mind map. And this is why you want this mind map. I'm going to give you this calculator right here. Again, text the word FLIP to 313131. The word FLIP to 313131. And you'll get the mind map in here. I have a calculator. Now, in this calculator, you're going to get what I use for a cash offer, sandwich lease option offer, and lease option assignment offer. Now, let me say this. Obviously, this goes without saying, don't make an offer on a lease option if you don't know how to do a lease option. <laughs> okay. Um, 
you otherwise, and I think I don't need to say this even, but you understand like the seller is going to think you're weird and you don't know what you're doing. And so maybe don't make an offer um, on, if you don't know how to use the contracts and the paperwork and how to sell the deal, how to find a pre-screen, a good tenant buyer and all of that stuff, right? Um, a good place to start is getting my audio book at WLOaudio.com, WLOaudio.com. And I teach you how to do these deals here, option number three. In the mind map, I'm also giving you a calculator that I created for seller financing. Um, there's cash offer option number one, seller financing interest only payments, number two, and number three, seller financing principal only payments. So sometimes, you know, if it's a cheaper property, if it's under $100,000, for example, in the Midwest, I'm going to make a cash offer and seller financing offers. I don't want to make, um, I don't want to do a lease option on a lower end cheaper property. And so this is a good way to make different offers to the sellers. And, you know, when I'm presenting this to the seller, I don't care which one they take, right? Uh, these are all still great deals. Um, so I'll walk through these two calculators here in a second. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to walk through, well, let me just g give you a little, um, let me call this your lease option calculator. Let me walk through kind of my philosophy a little bit and how I make my three main offers, my cash offer. I'm going to move this right there. Okay. My cash offer, my wholesaling lease option and my sandwich lease option. And you'll see in these calculators here for this one example, you see on this one I did here, my cash offer is 215. My sandwich lease option is 273 and my lease option assignment or my wholesale lease option is 320. So that kind of steps up the same with the seller financing. My cash is 33,000. My principal or seller financing interest only payments is 57,000. And my seller financing principal only payments is 65,000. So the price kind of goes up from one to the other. Sometimes if they're motivated, I'll just give them a cash offer, right? Or I might just give them a sandwich lease option offer. If they're cold, I might give them all three or I might give them one at a time. I might say, well, here's one offer. Here's another offer. So I might give them two, but that's something I teach in the course and in the book um, you can check out. All right. So kind of give my philosophy when it comes to cash offers. I keep it super simple. There's two methods I use. I use 70% of ARV minus repairs minus wholesale fee. That's your typical Mayo formula, right? And ARV I calculate just to be the average or the lower one of Zillow, Epraisal, RealQuest Express, what those free different services. And I'll show you what I mean here in an example. So I take the ARV times 70%. ARP is after repair value. Times 70% minus repairs minus wholesale fee. And for repairs, I just figure five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks a square foot, depending on kind of what work is needed. You might be needing to do 20 bucks a square foot, but this is going to get you within 10 to 20% of where you need to be. Okay. Um, another way that I do cash offers, and this is important. I'm going to add this in here. I do the average of the lowest three or five, okay, times 80%. And I'll show you this as an example too, especially on the lower end properties. I look at, I, I like to go to Redfin to get sold comps. Look at the lowest three, lowest five, average them, multiply that by 80%. And that's, and that's the cash offer I give. So that's two different methods, okay? Let me call this alternate method. By the way, do you have this mind map yet? Have you texted the word flip to 313131? I promise I will not spam you. <laughs> Sorry, whatever. <laughs> that's kind of not funny. I won't spam you, but I will email you a couple offers here and there. All right, wholesaling lease option offers. I'm going to give them whatever they want. This is the beautiful thing about it. Whatever they want and whatever market. Well, I'm not going to give them whatever rent they want. I'm going to give them the market rent and a minimum of two years. So if the house is worth 200, I'll give them 200 for it. If it's worth 200 and they want 300 for it, well, you know what? Maybe that's not going to work, but maybe it would work if I, instead of two years, I do 10 years, 15 years with the right to renew it every year that it doesn't appraise. Does that make sense? So I can give the sellers whatever price they want as long as they're willing to wait for it on a wholesaling lease option. And then you have sandwich lease option. This is where you stay in the middle. You have to, have to there's three profit centers, cash now, cash flow, and cash later. And so my quick and dirty calculation offer for this is pretty much as is value times 85%. 
So the, I take the ARV, the after repair value, minus repairs, and I get the as-is value. What's the house worth now? Times 85%, because why? I want at least 15% equity in the deal. And my cash flow, I want at least 300 bucks a month in cash flow or 25% of the rent. And I want to try to get minimum of five years. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because um, I, I, this is what I teach in my course. And, and I have a lot of stuff on here about this. Um, but that is a sandwich lease option where I'm going to stay in the middle. All right. Do you understand what I have here? I'm making a cash offer, a wholesaling lease option offer, and a sandwich lease option offer. Would you like to see an example of this? So right now I'm actually live on Facebook in the YouTubes. And if you want me to show you an example deal, what I want you to do is type in the comments, a city. Give me a city that you want. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Zillow and I'm going to look at that, look at that up. Thank you, Dan. Dan saying here, looking good, Joe. Appreciate it. Um, Dale, thank you. Text flip to 313131. If somebody could type that into Facebook, I would appreciate that too. Type in text flip to 313131. Um, somebody give me a city. You can type this into um, Facebook or YouTube. I see your comments. I see what you're typing in Facebook and YouTube. Okay, we got... <laughs> uh, come on, Sam. I can't use yours. That wouldn't be fair. Uh, how about Newark? Newark, New Jersey. And if Newark doesn't work then I'm going to use Fresno. <laughs> but uh, I'm just kind of going to see who's typing in here. Coral Springs, I don't know where that is. Is that Florida? Probably. Savannah, Georgia. Ooh, I like Savannah, Georgia. But let's go to Newark, New Jersey, shall we? All right. Thank you, Giesel. Appreciate that. Typing that in. And, and Philip also typed it in. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mary. All right, so what is it again? Uh, Newark. Newark. New Jersey. I probably didn't even pronounce that right, but um, we'll go with it. All right. I'm going to share my screen here again. Oops. There it is. All right. Newark, New Jersey. I'm just going to go look at Google, do some deep scientific research here and go to Google and get some information about Newark and see where it is. Ah, oh, it's near New York. Okay. One thing I know about this area is it's a little more expensive, right? Um, if I go and do a search here, median home price, Newark, New Jersey, the Zillow is going to tell me the median home price is $285,000. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to the Zillow. One of my favorite sources for leads is Zillow. Um, because I like to go find properties that are listed for sale by owner and for rent. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change my filter here to for rent. And what we're going to do is we're just going to come up with an offer. I'm going to find a property that's listed for rent. And I'm going to pretend that my VA sent them a message and I'm going to um, send them a offer. Well, you know, they, the, the VA sends a message. Hey, I saw your your rental property on Zillow. Looks like a nice house. I'm looking for a nice house. No, I'm just kidding. Is this a nice house here? Maybe. I mean, this is Newark. Okay, give them a break. Be, you'd be nice to our friends from Newark. But that's a nice house, maybe? 1800 a month. Um, let's remove the boundary. I want to look for... Oh, okay, fine. We'll just stick with this. Let's go with this house. Newark. This is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,567 square feet. They're asking 1,800 a month for it. Okay. And let's say the seller, and well, you know what? I wanted to find a property that has interior pictures to show you like we're looking for nicer homes that don't need any work inside. I'm going to actually remove the boundary here and I'm going to zoom out. A little bit. Let's go further out into the burbs. Would that be okay with you guys? We'll go further out into the burbs. I'm going to sort this from high to low. And I don't want the big expensive houses. I don't recommend doing lease options on a $12,000 a month house. 
So let's just scroll down. Let's get in the you know upper two, three thousand range, okay? And uh, how about this house? Let's see if it has interior photos. It's got a, a gnome in the front yard. Must be a nice house. Okay, this is a good looking house. Let's just go for it. This is in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, it's a duplex. Can you do lease options on duplexes? Sometimes no, it's a little bit harder. See, I knew I shouldn't have taken Newark. How about this house? <laughs> oh, what happened? Where's the picture? How about this house? Oh my gosh, whatever. There's no interior photos. I wanted to try to show you, like we're doing, we want to do lease options on nicer homes in nicer areas. And so I wanted to show you interior photos of, you know, a house that didn't need any work. It was ready to go, it was nice. And it's in the median price range. And if somebody uh, finds that house, they're going to want it. This looks like a nice house. Oh, okay. I mean, how would you not want to live in here with little kids? If you had a family with little kids, how could you not see this house and say, oh, my kids would love this place. Like I, I can't wait to let my kids run around this tiny house and, and, and play with all the antique furniture. Okay. Enough. This is a three bedroom, one bath, 2000 square foot, 2,750. They're like, this is a great, if you're going to be quarantined and you got little kids, this is a house you wanted them to be quarantined in, right? This furniture looks like it's really expensive and valuable. And yeah, I don't see any baby cribs in these pictures and high chairs and toys. All right. Enough of my uh, hilarious sense of humor here. Good grief. I'm going to I'm going to copy this address right here. And I do a couple things. I like to go to ePraisal. I like to go to the Redfin. I like to go to I have a PropStream account, propstreamjoe.com. And I like to go to express.realquest.com. Now let me log into propstreamjoe.com real quick. See, I didn't even do any of this in advance because I wanted this to be like raw. Here we go. And I'm just putting in some values in here to see what I come up with. And uh, just to kind of make it look real and unplanned and unprofessional. All right, here we go. Epraisal says it's worth 414.976. I'm just going to put these numbers in here in my little calculator. Now, what I do, again, when I'm calculating the ARV, all I do is I, I try to look at what these other sites are saying and just average them, get the median. You know, I don't, I don't spend too much time looking at this. If the seller says yes to my offer, I might then, you know, spend a little bit more time diving deeper into the comps, but this is just my initial offer. 427335. Okay. 427335. What does Redfin say? 405126. 405126. What does PropStream say? Again, propstreamjoe.com. It's really cool. Somebody always asks me, what's that clipboard thing you use to get things that you've copied into your clipboard? Um, it's called Clipboard History, and I'm using a map, uh, a, a Mac. 440242. Let's put this in the spreadsheet. And what did RealQuest give me? RealQuest Express? <laughs> okay, this may not be right because it's saying 77th Street. It's not giving me an address. So sometimes RealQuest Express, this is the free version. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's usually always something that doesn't work or you're hoping to get it. Like, let's try realtor.com. Go to realtor.com. Oh my gosh, just work. Let's see if this is it. It's unit home is what came up. Uh, value, it's not going to give you value because it's on the MLS for rent right now. Sometimes realtor.com gives you values. All right. So anyway, here we go. We got at least four of them. 427, 414, 405, 440. 
Now, don't go off on how inaccurate Zillow is or these things and they're a waste of time. All I'm doing is I'm just averaging. This is my initial offer. And I like to look at the average and the median because this tells me, you know, where we're at and, and it may, may tell me I need to remove the media, the, remove the outliers. So let's just say, let's go with 421. That sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to put it right here, 421000. By the way, if you want this calculator, you can get it. Did I say that yet? Go get my mind map, text the word flip to 313131. But once you get into this, if you want to edit this calculator and use it, you'll need to go right here to file and make a copy or download it as an Excel if you want to use it. Because when you get my link in the mind map, you only get view privileges. You can only view it. If you want to use it and get in there and play with it, go to file, make a copy, or go to download and download it as an Excel spreadsheet, okay? Now, if I'm going to make a cash offer, I'm going to do 70%. The square footage, I think we said, was $2,000 a square foot. Now, looking at the pictures, you know, it's nice inside. I don't think it needs much work once all the furniture. This is going to be interesting. Like, are they keeping the furniture? Well, I don't know. But one of the things that you guys got to be thinking about is you're going to start seeing a lot of, of property that's furnished like this that's listed for rent. I have a feeling, sneaky feeling, this might have been an Airbnb. Um, there's a Airbnb owners are struggling right now, hemorrhaging cash. And uh, it's really tragic and sad. Something that's this nice furnished like this tells me it might be an Airbnb. Um, so you may be able to negotiate something with keeping the furniture in there. I don't know. If it is furnished, uh, you're going to be able to, you'll probably be able to get a lot more interest and charge a more premium rent with it. Okay. So just ask them, but let's say we contact them and they say, and how do we contact them? By the way, let me cover that right now. This is listed with a realtor. So the, I'll, I don't have the time to show this, but in, you know, I teach how to contact the, whoever's number is there. See the phone number right there. You contact them, send them a text, call them um, and say, Hey, listen, I saw this property on Zillow at 1703 77th street and it looks like a nice house you know would would your would you consider selling it would you or your would you or your client consider selling it and they may say no they may say maybe make an offer so as soon as there any gets kind of any kind of warm like yeah maybe i'm going to call them i'm going to pick up the phone or you know if you're using rei simple you're going to click a button and call them you're going to say hey tell me about this house looks really nice I'm an investor. I'm looking for property in the area. Tell me about it. Is it a good home? Good area? What's the neighborhood like? What's the backyard like? Um, you have a big yard, you know, uh, ask them questions about the house. And you say, well, if you'd like to sell I me, mean, what's the least you'd take for it? I'm an investor, you know, tell them I'm an investor. And I even tell them I'm an investor out of town. I'm not even in the area. So they that stops the whole question of like, why don't you come and look at it? Tell me about the property. Well, you know, the least they would sell. I don't know what they would sell it for. Just make an offer. Well, let me ask you another question. Like, why don't you just list it on the MLS for sale? If you want to sell it for the highest price possible, why don't you just list it on the MLS? Well, you know, we can't or we don't want to, or we're not in really in a hurry to sell it. So on a scale of one to 10, their motivation, maybe a two or a three, right? So this is where I might send them three options. I might send them, here's a cash offer. Here's a sandwich lease option offer. Here's a wholesaling lease option offer. Um, but I might ask them something like, well, you know, listen, what if, what's the bottom line number? What do you need to walk away with? And they say, well, we would want to sell it for, we wouldn't sell it for a penny less than, than 425. I say, um, okay. Cause that, that was, is that what you feel like it's worth? Is that a fair price for this crazy market? They say, yeah, that's a fair price. I say, well, man, I don't know if I could buy it right now for that. Cause like I'm looking here on Zillow and Redfin and I see there's similar properties for sale in that neighborhood for cheaper than that. Um, but I don't know what if I could get you something around that price if you were willing to lease it for a year first and then sell it, that wouldn't work for you probably, would it? So I just, that's how I position and sell the lease option. Like, what if I could get you that price? Would you be willing to rent it for a little while first and see what they say? And they say, yeah, maybe. All right, so then I might not send them a cash offer. Do you see what I'm going with this? Sometimes I'll send all three. Sometimes I'll send just the sandwich lease option offer. Sometimes I'll send the the wholesaling lease option and the sandwich lease option offer because I want the lower price of the sandwich lease option offer to position my wholesaling lease option offer, my higher offer in a better light. Hope I'm not complicating this too much. I probably am. 
So I'm sorry, but we're just going to go with it. We're just going with it. Uh, we already complicated this enough when we picked Newark, but all right. So a 20, the rent, I'm just going to go with what the market rents are on this property. And one way that you can see what kind of the market rents are is I just will, will I'll go here and I'll copy this address here and I'm just going to go straight to Zillow and I'll show you why I'm doing this here. I'm going to go to Zillow.com and paste that address in there. What that does is it puts that property right in the middle of the map. Okay. So then when I close this thing here, that property is right in the middle of the map and I'm looking for rentals. Now I just zoom out and I can see what my rental comps are. I'm going to remove boundary and I'm going to sort it low to high. So I'm thinking here, all right, if I'm going to be trying to get this rented for $27.50, what is my competition? You know, can people, are they going to be interested in this property when they can rent this one for a couple hundred bucks less? Well, maybe it looks pretty good. This house doesn't look that nice and it's 500 more dollars. This one is, a you know, whatever, a lot more. So you can just kind of tell by looking, these aren't sold list uh, rentals, right? These aren't leased rentals. These are what the current competition is in the area. And I think 2750 is just fine. I'm just going with it. We'll see. All right. So I want at least 15% equity and I want at least 25% of the rent for my cash flow. I want to try to get five years on a sandwich lease option. And you know, I'll put uh, I'll put a thousand dollars down as option consideration. So I'm gonna offer him now an option price of 357,850. 357,850. And uh, I'm going to offer him rent of $2,063, $1,000 down, five years. All right. And then we talked to the seller again. He said, I wouldn't sell it for less than $425,000. And so this will then be my third offer here. I'm going to give him $425,000, $2,750 a month in rent, two years. And I'm going to put $100 down as option consideration because you could do 10 if you want, but you have to give something for consideration to the sellers. Now, I don't have the time to show you how, like I have a letter that has a cover letter and it has another page with the three options. And then another page explains what a lease option is, lists the benefits, and then three pages of frequently asked questions. Because just get my book. If you get my audio book, I talk about that. And I actually even give pictures of it in here. I can't find it right now, but go get the audio book at WLOaudio.com. Wait a minute, Joe. How can you view the pictures? From the audiobook. That's a good question. And I have not thought about that yet. Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't have too many pictures in here. Look, it, it's all killer, no filler, as I say. I'll have to figure that out. But anyway, in the book, on the audio or the book, I talk about these three different offers and how to present them to a seller. Make sense? Now, um, I want to show you another example, like on a cheaper end property. And this time I'm going to pick my own market. Somebody else gave me, um, let's just go to St. Louis because I'm so familiar. No, no, let's do this. Let's just make this fun. Somebody else give me a market. And uh, I'm going to look at the comments here. Oh, Tyler, good question. Do you have a script for calling for rent leads? Yeah, I do. Go get my audio book at WLOaudio.com, and I talk about that in there. Okay, so type in another city. I want to, Let's go through it here. Giselle, is that a city? Probably not. New Orleans. I like, how about Dale? New Orleans. Let's do New Orleans. <laughs> now, New Orleans is crazy, so I don't know if I'm making another mistake here. New Orleans, Louisiana. Let me share my screen because you don't see it, do you? All right. New Orleans. I'm going to zoom out. And what I want to do here, is this New Orleans? Yes. I saw the word bayou somewhere. It must be New Orleans. All right. These are houses for rent. I just zoomed out. We have 1,100 results. And what I'm going to do here is I'm... I'm going to look for properties that are, how about under $1,000? Remember I talked about, I don't want to do a lease option on cheaper properties, but I might do seller financing. 
on cheaper properties. So I have a calculator in here, seller financing. And this one's a little more complicated because I got numbers in here. I went sp spreadsheet nerd crazy. And, um, but you, if you know, if you understand anything about spreadsheets, you can kind of go in here and see what I've done and I'll explain it. I'll try to, as I go through with this. Okay. So here we are. Um, let's say we're doing some marketing and this looks like a good one. This is in Baton Rouge. I love the name Baton Rouge. There's not even any pictures. And it's listed by a broker, I think, 100-fold LLC. And they have a phone number here. I send a text, nothing happens. Goes to voicemail. Or it's a realtor or a broker. So I send the owner of this rental property a letter. Let me give you another example here because one of these things, one of the things that these houses all have in common, if I can find one that has pictures in it, here we go. Guess what this one has in common with all the other rentals? There's only four pictures and they're the same. What's wrong with you people in Newark and Baton Rouge? This one doesn't have pictures either. Maybe there is a, I don't know. I'm trying to find one that's not a street view. This one. This looks like a mobile home. It's a modular home or a mobile home or something like that. I typically tend to stay away from those. Let's do this. I'm going to up my rent to 1200 A sort from high to low and get some normal houses in here. Um, you know what? I'm going to do something. I'm going to change this to 1000 instead. All right. Here we go. This looks like a normal house. Good. With awesome countertops. Blue, it's the new trend. Colored countertops. All right. So guess what? Again, this house is vacant. All of these properties on Zillow has something really cool in common. It's vacant. Now, what I wanted to show you was here there's no phone number. So I can't text them. Sometimes if you click ask a question, you'll find the phone number right there. But uh-oh, it's a rental property management company. Oh, no. That's all right. I'm still going to call them or text them anyway. But with REI Simple, I can take this address right here, and it's a, and I can click a button, find the owner, click another button, and send them a letter. I can send a letter to the owner of the property. All right. So um, the guy's like, I just want to sell it. I don't, you know, and it's a cheaper property. You don't want to lease option it. You just want, uh, he just wants to sell it. So I'm going to make him a cash offer, a cash offer. So what do you do? How do you do that? I like to, let's see if Redfin is available in this area. All right, good. Redfin is. One of the things I like about Redfin is I get really good sold comps. So what I like to do is go down here to the map. And sometimes you'll see it. There'll be a link that says right here, map nearby homes for sale. And there's two maps for some reason. Like one isn't good enough. So they, they give you two of them. Here's the second one. Right here is this link called Map Nearby Homes for Sale. Now this is sneaky. Redfin gets a little sneaky with this. If you Sometimes you can't find it. You have to click on this little square icon. And um, let me. I just realized I told my wife I would be ready for dinner 20 minutes ago. And uh, I'm such a dork. Sorry. 7 p.m. Okay, so it won't be that bad when you say you're sorry. It won't be as bad. All right, so this property here is a uh, 1,100 square foot. So I'm going to click on this thing here, Map Nearby Homes for Sale. And it's hot in here. All right, so that property is now in the center of that map. And I can sort this. Now, these are all of the current homes listed for sale in that map. I can zoom out. These are all the homes that are for sale. Oh, look at this. 16,000. Now, let's make sure these are houses. House. Okay, and let's do, what was the square footage did I say again? 1,100 square feet. So let's do 1,000 to... 1250. There's only three homes. 
Let's zoom out. Still only, ha only have three. So I might change my filters here to be 1,000 to 1,500 square feet just so I can get more. All right. And I can see here some of them are sold for 74.9. Or these are active listings. Okay. To see solds, I like Redfin because it makes it so much easier. I switch sold on. Let's do last six months. See how many we have. Some more. Let's do last year. Apply filters. All right, here we go. So now I have 31 properties. If that's too many, you can just zoom in. All right, now this is a pretty wide area, but now I can see sold comps sorted from low to high. You've got 69,000, and this one looks like it's been rehabbed. It's in good shape. 72,000, 80,000. So if I'm going to make just a quick, fast offer, and these all look like they're decent, right? I'm going to take the average, take the calculator, 69,000 plus 72,500 plus 80,000 equals divided by three. So the average is 73,833 times 0 0.8. I'm going to offer 59,000. Let me get my pen and paper. I'm going to offer my first my first offer is 59067. Okay? That's going to be a quick and dirty cash offer, 59,000. Now, in my seller financing here, um let's see. I'm going to say that the rents are 1000 bucks. So this kind of starts with rents and I'll get to that here in a second. So let's say the ARV on this thing um uh, it doesn't really matter for the sake of this calculation. I'm just kind of doing it here. The seller says they want to. They wouldn't sell it for less than eighty thousand if it was a cash offer. So I know in this area, if I'm going to sell it to an investor, they're going to want at least two. Or they're going to want at least twelve percent um, return on their money. Okay, if I can sell it net twelve percent cash on cash return, I'm going to find a buyer that will want that property, right? Square footage is about 1,100 square foot. Does it need any repairs? You know, I'm going to put five bucks a square foot in there. Um, gross monthly rent, let's do 1,000 a month. And I know I'm going to cover about 40% for expenses, property management, taxes, insurance, vacancies, maintenance, repairs, and all that stuff, right? So the net cash flow on this deal, if I'm figuring... Um, 40% for expenses. The net annual cash flow is going to be about $7,200. And if I want to make 10 grand wholesaling fee and I'm figuring about $500 in closing costs, I'm going to offer the seller 44,000. So this thing calculates if the net cash flow is 7,200 and that investor wants to make at least 12% of the money, I'm going to offer the seller 44,000 and I'm going to sell it for 54,000. What that means is I'm selling it to the investor for 54,000 if they buy it for 54 grand after they put in repairs and closing costs and they rent it out and they're figuring 40% for all of their expenses they're going to make 12% on their money. So this offer is based on the ROI. This I call this the ROI method. Does that make sense? So this is based on the ROI method. I'm going to offer the seller 44 i will sell it for 54. They're, the investor's all in after repairs and closing costs is 60,000. And they're going to make 12% of their money. If I change this to 15%, then I have to offer 32 and sell it for 42. If I have an investor that I know is looking for 10% ROI, I'm going to offer 56 and sell it to the investor for 66. Does that make sense? Clear as mud. All right. Now, that's my cash offer. Remember my other calculation, I figured 59. So now I need to think about this. Should I offer 59 or 39? Well, I'm going to go with a lower one. I'm always playing it safe, going with the lower one. But let's say, you know what? The seller wants 80 grand. Maybe I can get them 80 grand. I'm going to say the ARV on this house is just 80. Let's just go with it. I think Redfin, didn't Redfin say it was higher than that? I don't remember anyway. So, um, Let's say the ARV, let's just give the ARV is 90,000. 
And um, I can get the seller 90% of ARV, maybe. This is a spreadsheet that you can play with the offer. And I'll offer them 3% down, 5% interest rate, balloon in 10 years. And you look at the numbers, it calculates your purchase price, your cash needed, including uh, repairs, your annual net rent after 40% for expenses, your annual debt service, your monthly debt payments, your annual net cash flow, your monthly net. So you're going to make $295 a month net cash flow after all your expenses if you buy this house for 80 for 90% of ARV. So then I'm going to offer the seller, I can get you 75.5 for it with 10% down, 2200 bucks, 5% interest. Now you scroll down, you can see here your first year cash on cash return is crazy. It's 45%. In other words, you put $2000 in cash plus your repairs, you're going to make 45% on your money. If you sell that contract as it is, to an end buyer, you, you sell that contract for 10 grand to an end buyer, that end buyer is going to make 20% cash on cash return. Not too shabby. Now let's say, Mr. Seller, I can maybe get you that price that you want. You want 80 grand for it. Let me do this here. 95. I'll give you 80 grand for it. 10% down, 0% interest. So this means I'm going to need 13 grand at closing. Annual net rent seventy two hundred, debt service thirty eight hundred, net cash flow blah blah blah. I'm gonna make two hundred eighty dollars a month, net cash flow, but it's a zero interest. All right, so then I offer the seller eighty grand, eight thousand dollars down, two hundred twenty five monthly payments. So that's ten years or something. Is that right or twenty years? I don't know. Let me go to the calculator because I'm not good at math. Two twenty five divided by twelve. It's 18.75 years. So you're, if you stay in the deal, you're going to make 25% on your money. And if you sell the deal for 10 grand to another investor, you're going to make, they're going to make 14% of their money. Makes sense. You may want to do more periods, 250 periods, get you a little better cash flow. You may, may want to do less, 200 periods. Um, I think I did that right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was looking at the wrong number. Your monthly cash flow goes down the shorter the period, but the monthly payments go up. That's what, okay. I was looking at the wrong number. Okay. So now here's the whole point I wanted to share with you in all of this is when you're looking at talking to a seller, give them options. If all you have is a cash offer to the seller, that may not work. You're going to go from getting one out of 30 offers accepted to three or four out of 30 offers accepted when you can give the sellers options. So you can give them a cash offer with seller financing options, or you can give them a cash offer with some lease option options. And do you see how much maybe you're more likely now to get offers accepted when you can get creative? Give them the price they want as long as they're willing to wait for it. On cheaper properties, I'm going to give them, oh, I want owner financing. On nicer homes, you know, generally speaking, in the Midwest area, 100,000 and up. If you're in New York, Newark, you might want to do 150 or 200,000 and up for lease options and, and owner financing for you know 150 less. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Okay, I know I went through a lot. I want to see if you guys have any questions as I've been going through this. We got a lot of people on here. If you have any questions, type them in. I'm going to answer them real quick. Uh, but I got to hurry up and and uh get, get on over to my house. My, my, this is my home office. My office, my home is over there. Um, if you want the mind map again, text the word flip to 31, 31, 31. If you want my audio book, $1.99 for the audio book of this, go to WLOaudio.com. Okay. So who's got some questions again, if you want the mind map text flip to 31, 31, 31, I'm going to look at the questions here. Tyler's got a good comment here. I've been doing rent times 65 minus rehab for a quick offer. That's great. I had a guy, uh, one of our buyers that was, um, he said, listen, I use a simple formula. Take the rent times 12 times or divided by 1.2 or something like that. Um, Raul is a little bit confused on how I'm getting those numbers. Okay. So you need to get, you need to dive into the spreadsheet and uh, watch this video again. <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could help you. 
Oh, good question. Where do I get that spreadsheet? Who wants to tell her? Text the word flip to 313131 and you will get my mind map, which is right here. Let me share with you my mind map. You will get this mind map and I have the calculators right here. Okay. Now my next video, I'm going to be talking about buyer marketing, how to do buyer marketing, because that's going to be really important. And I'm also going to be talking about how to do follow-up with your old leads. One of the cool things about follow-up thing that I'm going to be giving you is I'm going to be giving you the letters. I have a bunch of letters I use. I'm going to be giving you the whole text sequence of follow-up text messages we send, email autoresponders with free seller's reports. I'm going to be giving that to you in the mind map when I start talking about follow-up. If you want this mind map, again, text the word FLIP to 313131. And um, cool. All right. Let me stop sharing my screen here and see if we have any more questions. Can I do a training on sandwich lease options? Go to sloclass.com if you want to see my webinar and my training on that. Um, if you go to sloclass.com, um, I have a whole webinar on that. Okay. Thank you, Christina. WLO Audio. Do you recommend having a VA cold call all the for rent ads to make offers? Uh, no, I don't like that. Um, although we do a lot of cold calling, but we're not calling rental properties. I prefer to send a text or an email and a letter, all three. Maybe even do a slide dial. Um, and then if any of those sellers raise their hands, then I call them and get on the phone with them. Gisell, I love mind maps. Awesome. How much is REI Simple a month? It starts at 97 a month and it goes to 197. So do you send that exact same spreadsheet to a potential seller? No. That's going to confuse them and think that you're on crack cocaine or something like that. They're going to be, why are you sending me this? Um, not to make light of crack cocaine because it's serious, but don't send them the spreadsheets. I don't text blast or RVM blast. We send text messages one at a time and bring us voicemails. I'm, I'm cautiously like, be, I'm telling people just be careful with that. I don't like doing it. All right, good. I don't see any more questions here, guys. I appreciate you all very much. Um, two things again, get my audio book for $1.99 at WLOaudio.com. And if you want the mind map that I just shared with you, text the word flip to 313131. In a future video, probably tomorrow, I'm going to share with you how to find cash buyers. Find buyers are really, really important as the market shifts here. And then the next video after that, I'm going to do one more. That will be uh, how to do follow-up. And so what I'm going to do is, you may not see those other videos because for whatever reason, I'm going to put links to those videos in the mind map. So in the mind map, you're gonna, we're going to have a recording of this video and a recording of the buyer marketing and the follow-up as well in that mind map. Does that make sense? Cool. So, hey, listen, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, subscribe or like give me a thumbs up. Like it. If you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. Um, and that would be really cool. We've got some more questions in here. Good content. Thank you. What do you guys think of this? Does this make sense? Is this helpful to you? Type something in. You're welcome, Tyler. Thank you. Ooh, Kevin, when you make an initial contact with the seller, do you tell them what a lease option is and how it works? Yes, briefly. I certainly do. Uh, do I recommend a VA to do the marketing, lead gen? As soon as you can get a virtual assistant, yes. And Christina, you nailed it right here. Terms for selling will be huge soon. We're already seeing it, especially when we're doing, as I'm going to be talking about follow-up in a future video, we're seeing a lot of leads that we sent an offer to before that we're following up with that are saying, yes, I'm interested now. Um, so follow-up is really, really critical, especially if you've already sent them a cash offer and they said no, now you can follow up and send a terms offer. So important. Thank you, Philip. Appreciate it. Thank you, whoever you are. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll see you later. I'm out of here. I got to go. Text the word flip to 313131 and uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye.